by now you can see that we, we consider ourselves athletes, but we're, we're not going to bungee jump. You're not going to get a Christmas card from us skydiving in tandem you know, with a <laughs> helmet on our head. We're not what you would call outdoor sports people. There is a big difference between people who play badminton and outdoor sports people. A couple of years ago, I got a telephone call from a speaker friend of mine from South Carolina, Al Walker. Al is also an associate of mine in Platform Professionals, a group of six humorists who work together and have for years. Al is a funny, funny man. He's so funny that I thought he was joking in the phone call <laughs> because he was calling to ask Left Brain and me to go on an eight-day white water rafting trip down the Colorado River through the Grand Canyon. The trip was to take place two years later, made it last August. I do not know what made me do this, but without batting an eye, I said, Al, you put the Robertsons down, we're going. And then I went to tell Left Brain. And when I got the words white water rafting out of my mouth, he stood up from his eye. He said, no, no, no white water rafting. Remember the Nana Hala. <laughs> it was like, remember the Alamo. <laughs> he was going to pull out something that happened 30 years ago to keep us, use it as an excuse not to go on this eight-day white water rafting trip. See, we had been asked to go on this little, little bitty three-hour trip down the Nantahala with about 20 people from this county 30 years ago. We didn't know anything about it, but one of the people had been in the Boy Scouts and knew all about it. <laughs> so we went, it was Dr. Gene Long was who it was. <laughs> Oh, let's all go up there. We were the last ones in a raft going down this Nantahala River, and Dr. Long was in the front, and four of us were in the middle, and Left Brain was sitting in the back, and we were all pad <laughs> paddling away like we had good sense. And I guess the terrain was typical because the water was swirling, and over here you had a high embankment, and over here you had another one. And going down the river on our left, at the top of this high embankment was a two-lane road with people riding down. They looked down at us like, look, outdoor sports people, take their picture. <laughs> and as we were paddling, and I mean, this was tough going around, but everybody else was in front of us. One of the women in the middle said, y'all, when you get a chance, look up at the road. There's a wild man running down the highway with a paddle over his head. Well, of course, we all looked up. And it clicked in at the same time. It's left brain. <laughs> left brain was gone. Way back up the Nantahala, he had been knocked off the boat. And he hollered and screamed, and we just kept right on going down. So he made his way to the side of the Nantahala and climbed up the embankment and had been running for, he said, get over a mile trying to get ahead of us. So can you see that when this man right here called and said, let's go on this trip, and I said to him, we're going, this one over here said, no, remember the Nantahala. So we then entered what I would call the discussion persuasion part of the decision. <laughs> Left brain was adamant. He said, I'm not paddling down another river. I almost died. I'm not paddling down another river. Oh, honey, I've run the whole website thing off. Good news. We don't paddle. We're on 35 foot motorized rafts with guides. You just sit on that raft all day. Look at the Grand Canyon. You can take naps. <laughs> You can read, catch up on your correspondence. <laughs> Drag a foot in the water, but we don't do any paddling. Left brain stood there a minute, his head, you could see he was clicking, I was clicking, we were both going, and he said, 
Well, the truth is, I don't want to float along in, in a raft for eight hours a day for eight days. Oh, oh, good news, good news. It says right here, several times a day, we pull off the river and we take leisurely strolls. That's what it says right here. <laughs> Leisurely strolls, unquote, through the Grand Canyon. All right, both of us still thinking. Thinking, he said, let me be real honest with you. I'll be 69 years old when we go on this trip. And I said, that's why we have to hurry. It says right here. Don't go after age 70. See, it says right there. We got to hurry, honey. We got to hurry. No, I'm going to tell you the truth, Jeannie. He said, I, I don't want to sleep on the ground one night much less eight. Better news than you've heard before. It says it right here. Look right here on this website. We will be sleeping on cots. <laughs> in little white private tents. We will not be on the ground. <laughs> Where will we bathe? Well, it says right on the website, we will bathe each afternoon when we pull off the river in the clear, cool Colorado River. <laughs> it says right here, clear but refreshing. <laughs> Where are we gonna go to the bathroom? <laughs> I don't know everything, but honey, you know they've got adequate facilities or people wouldn't be doing this every day. And look, it says right here, no cell phones, no computers, no contact with the outside world, and we will meet new, interesting people. <laughs> At that point, I had to go into my clincher. Tom says he'll go if you'll go. Tom was Tom Parham, the recently retired tennis coach from Elon University, and he didn't want to go anywhere if it didn't involve a golf course. But his wife, Margaret, wanted to go, and she was saying to Tom, left brain says he'll go if you'll go. We've all done this, and because they love us, and because you can generally get anybody to promise something if it's two years out, they agreed to go on this trip. I have important information worth your being here tonight, write it down. <laughs> if you are 45 years old and you want to go on this trip, <laughs> then you need to go, uh, go ahead. It's beautiful, it's a nice experience. You'll really, you'll find it rewarding. <laughs> if you are between 45 and 60 and wanna go on this trip, you need to hurry. If you are in our age range in the 60s, you gotta, you gotta know you can die on this trip. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, right, you can't go. I can tell you right now, you, you can't go, you can't. There's not a man in here that can go. <laughs> and you can't even look at our pictures. It'll do you in. As advertised, there was no cell phone. There was no contact with the outside world. Nobody had a computer. And we did meet new interesting people. But they didn't have what I would call adequate facilities. <laughs> the rule is, if you take it into the Grand Canyon or you produce it in the Grand Canyon, you take it out with you. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that anymore. <laughs> but I will talk about the new interesting people. There were 26 of us that went, not counting our gu uh, guides. Many of us were connected with the speaking profession or friends of speakers. The other half of the people were from Al's Baptist Church <laughs> in a small town in South Carolina. They all sang in the choir together. I really wouldn't say they sang together. <laughs> I would say they sang at the same time. <laughs> we met in Las Vegas for this four hour trip up to put into the river. And from the moment we pulled out, they struck up, shall we gather at the river? <laughs> Left brain said, how long is this gonna take? 
You think they're going to sing the whole way, the beautiful, the beautiful? Well, I won't even spend my time because we don't have all night telling you that our four hour trip was a 10 hour odyssey. <laughs> with us stranded with no cell phone contact. If you are on a motor coach right now and you're watching this, if your driver and your tour director know where you're going and you have gas <laughs> and contact with the outside world, then you right now say thank you and give them a round of applause. <laughs> We finally did gather at the river, and when we saw it, even the Baptist group quit singing in the middle of the beautiful, the beautiful, oh my goodness. It wasn't a clear, cool Colorado River. It looked like chocolate milk swirling, swirling around. You wouldn't have bathed in this water. You wouldn't have put your dog in this water. You wouldn't have put your foot in there, it would have stopped the whole thing. And finally somebody said, is this, is this the Colorado? And our guide, Sparky, <laughs> said, oh, this is it. It's a little muddy now, it's monsoon season. You, you should have come in June, it's clear in June. Tom Parham said, June's when you took the pictures for the website, wasn't it? <laughs> finally spoke up and said, Sparky, is it going to be like this all eight days? And he said, well, Jeannie, I could lie to you. Left brain standing right behind me said, if somebody hadn't lied to me, I wouldn't be on this. <laughs> Let me make sure you understand right here. Let's just say, Alan White, you're good. Let's say I got a bucket and it's full of mud and sticks and bugs. <laughs> and I fill it with water, and while you're just sitting on the raft catching up on your correspondence, <laughs> I start swirling this bucket, and I'm watching you the whole time, and when you least expect it, I take the whole bucket and I throw it right in your face. And then while you recover, I start swirling another bucket. <laughs> And I hit you in the face with this stuff for eight days when you never know. The first time it hit us, people said, oh my goodness, that was something else, wasn't it? I... Hand me that towel. This thing messed up my outfit. Hand me that towel. And this thing comes, you, by the second day, you see it coming, you turn your head and duck. By the third day, you don't even do anything but pause in conversation. <laughs> Yeah, our son, our son graduated from Elon Slap <laughs> University. You just keep right on going. But interestingly enough, that wasn't the only thing that happened. We drew straws, and every so often, some people had to sit up in what they call the bucket or the bathtub. This meant you really got it tough. And one time, left brain was here, and I was here, and one of our new Baptist friends from South Carolina was right here, and Sparky stopped the raft. And he came up and said, we're getting ready to go over a rapids where you will drop 20 feet. For a few seconds, you will be completely submerged. There are ropes on either side of you. Grasp those ropes. Do not let go. If you let go, you will be swept off the raft and we will pick you up down river. And then he left. Left brain said, what did he say? He said to hold on. We went down and if you ever just dropped 20 feet, the water came all over us. We were holding on. You couldn't see any sunlight. And when we came up, I couldn't breathe. I couldn't talk. And I nodded at left brain. I'm alive. <laughs> he said, I'm alive. And I turned to my new friend on the left. And I said, I don't think I've ever been through anything like that. And she said, you're not a Baptist, are you? <laughs> We got off that raft 
And it was like a B-rated zombie movie. <laughs> Moving along, mud covered all over us. It was terrible. Within a few minutes, Tom Parham came up and says, Robertson, I've checked. There's no way out of here. <laughs> We're stuck on this river for eight days, 227 miles. But I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be nice about it because I wanna keep my sense of humor about it. But when we get home, you better know I'm gonna burn down your house. <laughs> but he was wrong. He, there is a way out. The National Park Service will helicopter in and get you if you die. <laughs> if you break a leg. And I thought about it, nothing, nothing messy, not a knee or an ankle, but right in here, mid. Left brain said he thought about breaking one of my legs too. <laughs> but that first night, old Sparky announced they were putting out wine. 45 degree wine, if anybody might be interested might be interested. The Catholics, the Episcopalians, the Presbyterians, the Methodists just almost trumpled him to the ground. But where are the Baptists in here? Would you raise your hand? We know you're here. You're always here. You would have been so proud of your brothers and sisters. They said, none for us. Y'all go ahead. No, that's okay. One of the Episcopalians said, well, thank goodness. There's a whole lot more for us. I'll The second night, they put out the wine. And as they poured it, a couple of the Baptists... <laughs> just started coming over and one of them said, is it real cold? <laughs> the third morning, we saw the whole choir section huddling with Al Walker. We said, what are they up to? I don't know, they've got a new song, I guess. A minute, Al took his cup and raked it across the rock and said he had an announcement from the Baptist group. From this point on, what happened on the river stayed on the river. <laughs> and the last morning, those people served communion with red wine and Cheerios, and I will never forget it. There were no cots. <laughs> they discontinued the cots and they didn't update the website. We had little thin bed rolls to be on top of. And, and the first night I said, I can't, I can't get comfortable with this rock in the mind of something. Left brain said, we're in the middle of the Grand Canyon. <laughs> what did you think you'd be sleeping on? A marshmallow? Well, of course we're in the rock. And, but we had these little white tents four feet high by four feet by six. Left brain six six, I'm six two. They had a little, first of all, you had to even put it up and down twice a day with your spouse. You know. <laughs> Match the color of this and put it over. They had a little zippered door, a little Shetland pony couldn't have gotten into that. <laughs> first day we said, how we get in this thing? If we crawl in, we take this sand and we got that all night. Finally I said, just come on. Follow me, left brain. We're going. We got it. We got it. We got it. Get in. You get in. All right, you in? He said, yeah, now what do we do? Get out. I got a Charlie horse. Get out. Get out. Get out. But every night in the tents, we had little conversations because it was pitch dark. There was no light in the Grand Canyon. And you'd say things like, the first night, I remember it well because it was pouring down rain. And I said, honey, I'm so sorry. I'm just so sorry. I didn't, I didn't know it was going to be like this. It's not what I expected. And in the dark, he said, that's interesting. <laughs> it is exactly what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> and then he said, with all the great people you know in the tour industry, why aren't we on a motor coach trip? <laughs> One night, 
one night in the tent, he said, did you see Jenna crying on the rock? <laughs> Jenna was the only young person on the trip, and her parents right here, the Kings, had given her the choice of several things for graduation. <laughs> and they wanted her to go on the trip with them, and they pushed her in that direction. And I saw Jenna crying, and I said, Jenna, are you okay, honey? And she said, yes. <laughs> I'm all right. I, I could have had a used car. <laughs> Another night, in the middle of the night, I thought he was asleep. Left brain said, what are we going to do next year? The I did a rod. He just... <laughs> there were no leisurely strolls through the Grand Canyon. Leisurely strolls were a first cousin to rock climbing. And we were on, at our age, 18-inch ledges with showing the person behind you where to put a hand. And Sparky shouting at us, don't let go, don't let go, don't let go. You don't have to tell us that, Sparky. Don't look back, we can't look back from sleeping on this thing all night. And, and that night, Left brain said, honey, what, what are we doing? What are we doing here? You're, you're, what are we doing? We are holding on to ropes <laughs> and rocks with hands that at home in our kitchen cannot open a jar. <laughs> what, what, what are we doing? But I will tell you that one day on that rock climbing, I twisted my arm the wrong way and I went sliding. And this man right here, Tab King, crawled out on a ledge, got on top of me and inched me back, inch by inch. Nothing's too good for the man what saved my life. <laughs> Quoting Gomer Pyle. And then that night in the tent, I said, did you see me about to lose my life on that ledge? And I didn't think he was gonna answer at all. And finally he said, I couldn't help you. concerned how we were going to get off this river. <laughs> so I went to Sparky, the guide, and I said, what's happening, Sparky, the last day? What, what do we do? How do we get out of here? And he said, well, on Sunday afternoon, we pull in to the Ramada, and there'll be somebody there to take y'all back to uh, Las Vegas. The Ramada? Eureka! <laughs> A Ramada Inn out here in the Grand Canyon? I got all the women together and I said, good news, Sunday, hot showers, mattresses. I'm gonna get my own room, left brain's on his own. <laughs> it, and it led to all week saying things like, it's Thursday, but Sundays are coming. <laughs> Friday, Sunday, and then we pulled in and there was a Native American woman sitting there in a little hut. And I said, Sparky, where's the, where's the Ramada Inn? He said, there's no Ramada Inn. Ramada is the Spanish word for small thatch hut with a roof. <laughs> she, she's sitting in the, in the Ramada. <laughs> but the night I want to tell you about is the fifth night. We had not bathed in five days. We had not washed our hair in five days. We had been on these ledges, we crawled in. That was after you saved my life. I was just glad to be alive. We got in there and we were sound asleep. And about three in the morning, left brain decides to get frisky. <laughs> and he started kissing me on the neck. Now every couple has its signal. With us, this is it. And I thought to myself, has he lost his mind? Has the mud seeped in through his ears? And I reached up to just push him away and it was a lizard. <laughs> and not, not a North Carolina lizard, it was a Grand Canyon lizard from here to here and then the tail went all up here. I screamed, woke up left brain, he forgot where he was and stood up in the tent. Took a four foot high tent all the way up, threw me down into the bottom with this lizard. The tail would hit me in the face. We, we couldn't find our flashlights. I tried to go this way, pulled him down over here. We looked like an amoeba moving around in a 
grocery discs all around the campsite. They put on their flashlights, started coming out of their tents. <laughs> coming over to see and we're going in every direction. It looked like the Michelin tire man was fighting the Pillsbury dope boy. <laughs> and they circled us with their flashlights. And then came the understatement of the trip. Al Walker says, y'all need some help? <laughs> Get the thing open. He finally got it unzipped. The first one out was that lizard. He was gone. The next morning at breakfast, everybody's talking about what they thought, what they saw, what they... I said, well, wait a minute. Left brain and I want to know. Just want to know, what took you so long? You could see us fighting each other, looked like a popcorn thing had blown up inside the microwave, going, moving all around. What took you so long? And I all said, well, you remember what Sparky told us the first day? A couple's tent is like their private home. <laughs> If the tents are rocking, don't go knocking. <laughs> but I do have to tell you that at the first of the week, and I guess this would be my point, one of these people from South Carolina, one of our good new friends, came up and said, Al tells me you're the speaker who goes around the country making people laugh. I said, yes, I am. He said, he told us you talked to him about seeing the humor in stressful situations. I said, yes, I do. He said, well, that's just something, isn't it? God is testing you and the rest of us have gotten pulled in on it. <laughs> By the way, the best line of the whole trip was not from a professional speaker, and we had so many on there. And you and I think we're funny. It wasn't from the Baptist, it wasn't from Coach Parham, it, wasn't, it was from Sparky. Because <laughs> I went to him the last day and I said, Sparky, something just dawned on me. I said, here's Jeannie and you've been with me all week, on and on and on, and, and now next week in three days, you're taking a whole nother group out. <laughs> you won't even remember who we are. We're just another group of rafters. And he looked up at me and he said, oh no. I'll never forget you, Harriet. 